In this video, I illustrate uh, the concept of economic order quantity. Economic order quantity is also called as EOQ. Before that, let's look at the setup of this economic order quantity. So we have two entities. First one is a supplier. Second one is a buyer. Buyer places an order for a product and supplier satisfies the order instantaneously which is zero lead time. In reality, this would never happen, but this is just an assumption for this particular setup. And the buyer faces the demand, which is known and constant. There are two key questions that the buyer should address. First is how many units the buyer should purchase from supplier. Second one is when should buyer place an order. Now let's focus on the buyer. Buyer consider should consider the following cost for the decision making. First one is the inventory holding cost. So this cost occurs when the buyer carries the products in the inventory. This is related to, this could be related to uh, renting the warehouse facility or utility paid and uh, labor work in the warehouse facility or, and so on. And this inventory holding cost is proportional to two quantities. One is the average cycle inventory. Another one is the unit holding cost. Average cycle inventory is nothing but the half of the ordering quantity and the second second cost the buyer should consider is the ordering cost the cost incurred when an order is placed this cost is related to administrative cost and the transportation cost and so on and this ordering cost is proportional to two quantities one is the number of orders placed and the second one is the ordering cost per order and the last one is the purchase cost which is directly proportional to the purchase price and the quantity purchased. Let's take a look at a simple example and build our intuition. So in this example, the buyer faces a demand of 70 units per week and uh, the buyer incurs uh, $5 per order as an ordering cost. As a holding cost, the buyer incurs $1 per unit per week. Let's say the buyer orders 70 units. And uh, if you, let's take a look at how the inventory decreases as the time progress, right? So on the x-axis, you have uh, time and the y-axis you have in quantity. Let's, uh, let's assume that uh, the buyer starts with an initial inventory of 70 units. And as the week progresses, the in inventory decreases. By the end of Saturday, the inventory hits zero and the buyer places an order of 70 and buyer receives immediately and buyer moves on to the next week. So if you look at the ordering, co ordering costs incurred by buyer, in a given week is nothing but $5 because the buyer has to order only once a week. So one times five is $5. And the average inventory is half of the ordering quantity. In this case, half of the 70 equals to 35. And the total inventory cost, the average inventory times the holding cost, which leads to $35. And if you add both of these costs, the total cost per week is $40. Okay, let's see what happens if we cut down the ordering quantity by half. So in this case, the ordering quantity is 34 units and the buyer starts with an initial inventory of 35 and somewhere by the Wednesday afternoon or so, the inventory hits zero and the buyer places an order of 35, receives it immediately and by end of Saturday, inventory hits zero and again he places an order of 35 and so on. In this case, the buyer has to order two times a week. So two times five is $10. And the average inventory is half of the ordering quantity. 35 over two is 17.5. So the total inventory cost per week is $17.5. And if you add up these two costs, it leads to 27.5. So by, by cutting the ordering quantity by half, we see the total cost, total cost is reducing. Let's see what happens if we cut the ordering quantity Further. Now the ordering quantity is 10 units. Assume the buyer starts with an initial inventory of 10. By end of Sunday, the inventory hits zero and the buyer places an order, immediately receives, satisfies the Monday. By end of Monday, inventory hits zero. He needs to place an order of 10 and so on. So for every day, the buyer has to place an order, right? So total ordering cost per week is 35. So the number of orders placed in a given week in this week is seven. Seven times five is 35. And the average inventory is nothing but the half of the ordering quantity, which is five. Five times one holding cost leads to the total inventory cost of $5. Add up these two, the total cost per week is $40. So if you look at the summary, the best ordering quantity for a buyer is 34 units because that's when the total cost is at the minimum. 
So figuring out the best ordering quantity in this way, in a trial and error fashion, uh, can be really time consuming and also can be cumbersome. So in order to avoid that, let's figure out a mathematical way to represent the best ordering quantity, economic ordering quantity. We get into the mathematical equation. Let's observe what is happening with this particular example. So in this case, the order, when the ordering quantity decreases from 70 to 10, you could see the total ordering cost is increasing. At the same time, the total inventory costs are decreasing. The total cost is decreasing for some portion of the ordering quantity and for the rest of the portion, the total cost is increasing. Represent all those curves, all those costs uh, on a map. So on the x-axis you have the quantity and the y-axis you have total cost. So as the quantity increases, the holding cost increases and uh, ordering cost decreases. Now if you add these two costs, that gives you the total cost. In this case, the lowest total cost occurs right here when the holding cost is equal to the ordering cost, right? So at EOQ, total ordering cost is equal to total holding cost. So if you solve this equation for Q, then you would get an EOQ formula. So take all the Q terms to your left and the rest of the terms to your right which leads to q square is equal to 2 times d times s over h and take a square root on both sides that leads to 2ds by h this which is nothing but our economic order quantity now let's look at uh, how to calculate few of the formulas using evoq so we all know evoq is square root of 2 times s over h and the first is that total number of orders in a given time period just nothing but total demand divided by EOQ will give you the total number of orders and if you take a reciprocal of the total number of orders that will give you the time between orders and the last is basically how to calculate the total annual cycle inventory cost at the total ordering cost plus the total inventory holding cost total ordering cost is d over q times s total inventory cost is represented by Q over 2 times H. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thanks for your time. Appreciate it.